church said? Amen. Say amen again. Amen. One time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. If you would stand on your feet, amen. It's good to be back home, amen, from being gone for two weeks. You see, I'm excited, amen. I'm running up here. Uh, I've missed you guys, amen. I've been in Salina, and then on last Sunday, I was in Denver. Uh, at the Shiloh Baptist Church, and I thank God for those opportunities, amen, but I thank God more for being home, amen, amen, amen. giving honor to God, to uh, my pastor, amen, my father in the ministry, the great Dr. G. Calvin McCutcheon, who brought us our uh, charge to the church, amen, <laughs> thank God for him being here, and as we looked at our dedication, I didn't know anyone else I wanted to be on program but him. Amen. Everybody else is just okay, but, but he has the wisdom. Amen. Amen. And if you listen to what he had to say, amen, he, we, we got a blessing. Amen. I like the balanced budget, but God's got a blessing budget. Boy, that, that, that got me excited. Amen. Amen. If you would, Luke chapter 14. Amen. Luke chapter 14. And we're going to look at verse 13 and 23. There, amen. If you get there, say amen. Amen. If you're not there yet, it's on the screen. Amen. There you find these words recorded. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. Then the master said to the servant, go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. If you don't mind, on this anniversary, 128 years that we're celebrating, amen, I'm going to preach from this thought, fill this house. Fill this house. Ushers, you may relax. Amen. Thank God again for just being here. Thank God for you being here. And if you will pray with me, I don't think I got to be up here long. Amen. I want to be able to get you home, let you cook you some roast, let you eat, let you take a nap, and let you get back here for 4 o'clock service. Boy, y'all said amen like y'all going to do it. I feel good already. It's been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a fun week. It's been an exciting week. It's been an exciting time since last we seen you. Amen. Some amazing things have happened, and I'm excited about what God is doing in this season. Uh, one of our members, Trevlin, is not here because just a couple of days ago, she received a new kidney. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. It was a couple of Sundays, amen, that a couple of weeks ago she got a call that it was supposed to be her kidney. She got there and there was some mix up and blood work, whatever case may be. And whatever I preached that week, she said, Pastor, that really encouraged my heart. And I said, girl, if you just stay in there, trust me, God will work this thing out. Amen. Amen. And I got a call that she received a kidney and Sherry and Will were there with her on last night and we got word that she's doing well out of the ICU unit, everything. Amen. Don't, don't, don't tell me what God can't do. Amen. God, God can make a way out of no way. Amen. God, God can do some things. And so I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm excited. Yesterday, our youth pastor and I got a chance to go to a basketball game to see little Leonard play, and he put up 18 points. Amen. 18 points as a second grader. And I got excited because he blew about 30 points with Miss Layups. Amen. But he made 18. And so I'm excited. And I was excited on how he played the game, the excitement he had. And I thought about it. And God says, listen, there's a blessing on the house. But your people of God have got to realize, don't be selfish with the blessing. But you got to fill this 
house. One of the first things I want to tell you is don't reshuffle in the filling of the house, meaning don't go look in somebody else's congregation and try to pick out the most skilled individuals and invite them to the New Hope Church. No, 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 no. We're not about the reshuffling of the saints. Now, if they're there and they're not growing and they're not doing anything and they want to grow, then yes, we open up our arms, but if we don't have to go out and reshuffle. Why? There's enough unsaved folk out there to fill every church house, and we got to understand that we don't need to reshuffle. Why? Because God is doing a new thing today. Oh, y'all should have said amen. I'm, I'm almost through preaching already. I feel a hoop coming, a hoop coming on. Don't, don't reshuffle the saints, but go out and look out and find those that want to grow in Christ. Find those that are hungry for the word. Find those that are thirsty for Christ. Find those that want more. Find those that are longing after Christ. Find the God chasers. Don't fill this house with lazy folk. Amen, walls. Don't fill this house with grumbling folk. Don't fill this house with mean folk. Don't fill this house with trifling folk. Don't fill this house with hateful folk. I'm talking about some of y'all's cousins. Yeah, don't, 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 don't fill God's house with those kinds of folks unless they understand that they can't stay that way. Because we are going to preach love, we're going to preach mercy, we're going to preach grace, we're going to preach transformation. And you might come here one way, but you can't stay there when you get here. But we got to love folks where they're at, but want more out of them than what they're showing. And God says, fill this house. Secondly, if you're going to fill this house, don't be selfish with the food. I got the blessing of having a family that does not have favorite foods. Instead, they have favorite whatever daddy brings. I know y'all heard the first lady say she don't eat fried foods until I bring home something fried. No, you heard my daughter talk about what she don't like until she see me carry it in the house. Yeah. Seen Cameron and T, seen how big they are. But yet, if I bring in anything, that's what they like at that point. And so I've become smart, Dr. McCutcheon, whenever I have something that I want to eat, I wrap it up ugly, <laughs> put it in the bottom of the refrigerator, and put it behind everything else. Because I know there's one thing them rascals ain't going to do. They ain't going to move nothing. Now, some of you look at me and say, I can't believe you're that selfish. Well, I can't believe you're that selfish either. Some of y'all do the word of God the same way. <laughs> you come here Sunday after Sunday and you get good food and you take it home, but you don't tell nobody. You wrap it up in something ugly and put it in the back of the refrigerator and pull it out only to eat of yourself. You're lazy and you're selfish about the food. But is there anybody here that know I came here to hear word so I can go out there and spread the same word? I didn't come here to spiritually overeat, but I came to get something to help me along the way and to help somebody as I pass that way. I came here to help somebody else. Don't be, don't be selfish with the food. Hey, hey man, hey, hey man. So I have to tell the kids now, listen, here's some rules. Don't eat the last pork chop. A, 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 a man. The last pork chop is always reserved for the one who pays the mortgage. Now, when you pay a mortgage, you can have the last pork chop. 
But until then, you better look around that pan. And if you don't see no friends of that pork chop, leave that one alone. Don't mind you drinking my Pepsi, but don't waste it. Don't drink half a can and then leave it in the refrigerator. Y'all, y'all, y'all still with me? Don't mind you having cereal, but don't just leave a swallow in the pitcher. Don't be selfish with the food, but understand this, that what God has blessed us with to eat, we always have enough for anybody else who wants to eat it. Yeah, that, that, that went over some of y'all head. You see, if we don't teach our children that principle, they'll never be able to carry it out. But Big Mama had a way about herself. It didn't matter who came to the house on Thanksgiving. There was always enough turkey, always enough dressing, always enough ham, always enough green to feed everybody. Why? Because she understood God gave it to me. I'm supposed to give it away. One of the best ministerial, pastoral lessons I ever learned was from Dr. McCutcheon. He says, listen, keep giving and keep a giving spirit. I looked at him and I said, man, I'm not, I'm not fully, fully understanding that. He said, listen, I keep shoveling blessings to other folk because I learned a long time ago God's shovel is bigger than mine. And while I'm shoveling with my little shovel, God is shoveling with his big shovel. And I'll never run out of blessing as long as I know how to operate in blessing other folk. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. And we've got to learn how to be a blessing. Listen, you always telling folks they going to hell. But you ain't never showed them how to go to heaven. Always damning folks so to hell, but you never bless them how to get to heaven. Don't be selfish with the food. And then if you're going to fill this house, you got to invite the left out. Now, this is, this, is, this, is, this is what blew my mind when I started really analyzing this text. God used some specific individuals. And I want y'all to see and hear these folks. Either listen, invite the poor. They simply don't have it. Invite the main. They were hurt while they were living. Everybody's not mean because they were born mean. Some folk got mean because they had some bad life experiences. And God said, listen, invite the maim because they were born well, but something happened along the way. But there's still something on the inside worth saving. Is there any maim folk in the house that's glad that somebody invited you to Christ? He says, not just just, just those folks. He said, listen, invite the lame. They were born without or born unable to use some things. And then finally says, invite the blind. They can't see. He says, now when you, when you, when you have a banquet, invite those folk. Because those folks aren't going to get invited everywhere. I'm glad he didn't say just invite the pretty folk. Because some of us wouldn't be able to go to that party. Hello, somebody. I'm glad he didn't say invite the rich folk. Some of us wouldn't be able to go to that party. I'm glad he didn't say invite the perfect folk. (laughs) None of us would have been able to go to that party. (laughs) But there are some folk up in here (laughs) that you can admit that you've been poor and didn't have some things. (laughs) There's some folk up in here (laughs) that can admit that you were born on the other side of the tracks. (laughs) And there's some folk here
but there was a time in your life uh, that you didn't have what you needed, uh, but you had the right one on your side. Uh, is there anybody in here that know that God will uh, provide you with a blessing, uh, not a dime in my pocket, uh, but I got the favor of God, uh, and the favor of God uh, can take care of more bills uh, than three and four part-time jobs. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that understand uh, when I couldn't put steak on the table, uh, God made tuna fish all right. Uh, God will uh, bless the poor. Uh, but then there's some folk up in here uh, that you've been hurt a long life journey. Uh, you've had some ups and some downs, uh, and you lost some things along the way. Uh, but is there anybody sit here uh, that can testify uh, with everything I lost, uh, I never lost my praise. Uh, I learned how uh, to praise him uh, with everything. Uh, and I learned how uh, to praise him with nothing. Uh, whatever you do, uh, don't lose your praise. Uh, in fact, somebody can testify uh, that praise uh, may God uh, come to where you're at. Uh, and praise will uh, make demons tremble uh, and hell get the hiccups. Some of you can say, you were born lame, unable to do some things. Some of you can say, I was blind, but amazing grace. Now I see. So I stopped by here on my way to heaven to tell everybody, feel this house. Fill this house uh, until crack houses got to shut down because uh, they ain't got no more clients. Uh, fill this house uh, until everybody understands uh, that there's a God to glorify uh, and a God to serve. Uh, fill this house uh, until the casinos start losing money. Uh, fill this house uh, until the liquor stores uh, got to run super sales. Uh, Fill this house uh, until folks understand uh, we're giving away food because uh, he is bread of heaven. Uh, bread of heaven, uh, feed me uh, till I won't no more. Uh, tell folk uh, that this is a hospital uh, with free health care. Uh, by his stripes, uh, we are healed. Uh, tell folk uh, that this is a place uh, where regeneration happens happens uh, and lives are changed. Feel this house until every mosque and every Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall <laughs> got to shut the doors because <laughs> won't nobody be there no more. <laughs> Get up out your seat <laughs> and take the word that you hear <laughs> and put it in the practice <laughs> and go tell somebody <laughs> that God is <laughs> still on the throne and God is blessing and open up your jacket and say take and look I've been wounded but I'm still here I cried but I'm still here I've been lonely but I'm still here I've been depressed but I'm still 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 Fill this house until we got to take up a special offering to pay the water bill because we're baptizing that many folk. <laughs> Fill the house. <laughs> Go get Pookie, <laughs> Ray Ray, <laughs> Junebug, <laughs> whatever their name is. <laughs> Go get them. <laughs> Put your arms around them <laughs> and let them know <laughs> there is a house <laughs> where you can find hope <laughs> for your weary soul. Feel this house until the police got to start warning us about ordinances for being over capacity. And we have to remind the police the capacity number is what you gave us. But the Lord says there's always room 
at the cross. <laughs> Somebody better get this. <laughs> Fill this house until every sinner gets tired of hearing of new hope and every believer tell somebody else and tell somebody else and tell somebody else that there is a church that sitteth on the hill that's not hiding their light and they're not afraid they're not afraid of drug dealers dope addicts whoremongers prostitutes strippers whatever they can come out of God can bless them out of fill this house don't come to the father I'm talking about they gave me an excuse why they couldn't come don't come to the father saying well I invited ten folk but none of them showed up if the ten folk you invite don't show up Go invite 10 more folk that ain't got nowhere else to go. I don't care if they drunk. I don't care if they high. I don't care if they shacking. I don't care if they're lying. I don't care if they backbiting. I don't care if they cheating. I don't care if they stealing. Because if I care about that, God got to care about us. And some of us got the same backgrounds. But we came to Jesus just as we were. Weary, wounded, and sad. But we found in him a sweet old resting place. And he has made me glad. Is there anybody who ain't so stuck up to stand up and say, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. The Lord has wrote my name up above. I know. I know. No. I know. I know. I know I've been changed. I don't care what nobody else say. If won't nobody else testify, I'll stand by myself and tell the dying world that I have been changed from the inside out. 